Hello everyone, welcome to my Autumn Fall Bath & Body Works White Barn Candle Company Slatkin & Co. Candle Picks. Um, settle in for what may be a slightly long video. You know, you see I've got 12 candles here to talk about. I won't go crazy in depth with them, but I definitely want to explain what I love about them, some of the notes, um, and the history of some of them, because as you see, some of these are scents that you may not be familiar with, um, that did not return this year, or even a few of them were scents that did not return last year. Um, there's a mix of candles here from 2011, 12, and this year, 2013, um, in various forms and, uh, or various, you know, packaging here. So I'll give, um, you know, somewhat in-depth reviews on each one, nothing too crazy. Um, most of these I have reviewed in some form or another over, you know, the past year, uh, year plus. Um, but I've sort of categorized these into three categories plus two um, sort of wild cards. And then I'll also mention I have got a few honorable mentions because it's really hard um, to sort of narrow these down. So, you know, I was looking through all of the, the fall and autumn scents I I've, you know, purchased over the past few years um, that I have not fully burned through yet from Bath & Body Works White Barn. And, you know, they, they've had, you know, right now they probably have 40-some cents, and each year they've had another maybe 15 to 20 cents that probably don't return, um, you know, when you average it out from 2011 and 12. Um, I f my first sort of fall with purchasing candles from them was 2010, um, but there's really not much that didn't return from then, uh, except maybe like a creamy nutmeg or something, uh, because 2011, for me, was one of their best autumn releases. Um, the packaging you see here in the middle, that mountain leaves packaging, um, the pumpkin patch uh, packaging, and up top their lavender caramel were both from that year. And they just had, they weren't really divided into super specific collections. The labels were all the same across the board. They were classy, they focused on the image, not so much the name, um, and just really nice blends. They all burned for the most part, from what I can remember, fantastically well. Um, just great sense across the board. Um, you know, th through the different collections. Um, but so I had to narrow it down here. You know, obviously I purchased a ton of candles. You've seen my hauls and reviews, so it's kind of hard to narrow down into just tw top 12 because especially because um, fall and autumn scents are my favorite. But I've done my best here to try to figure out what I consider to be, you know, the best of the best. So I've got them here in three categories plus, like I said, sort of the, the wild card extra. Uh, sorry for the moving around here. I'm just trying to to get my list. Um, so let's just run through the from the bottom up and then I'll get into them. So you see at the very bottom, um, last year's packaging, white bar number one, nutmeg and spice, apple crumble, cinnamon sugar donut, and cider lane. Um, I'm considering those my sweets and bakery uh, collection within this video. Of course they, they were in different collections uh, with Bath and Body Works, but for me those are the sweets and bakeries. Next up, cranberry woods, marshmallow fireside, and leaves. Those are sort of the classic and dark uh, and then above that, we have Sweater Weather, Mountain Leaves, and Autumn. Those are my fresh and outdoor scents. And then up top, two that really can't be categorized and are probably my favorite two, Pumpkin Patch, also known as Pumpkin Carving, and Lavender Caramel, also known as Lavender Macaroon, uh, from 2011. Um, and I'll get into the honorable mentions be you know, before we finish. But let's work our way from the top down. So, excuse the, the bumpiness here. I'm going to try to do my best to set these up in a way that will work. Okay, so first up, lots of reflection there, I apologize for that. Let's get some focus. The Fantastic Pumpkin Patch. A lot has been said about this candle. I'm very happy that it has returned this year as pumpkin carving. Um, this sort of always was like the um, the underappreciated, um, you know, <laughs> step stepbrother to Sweet Cinnamon Pumpkin. Um, it's not in body care, it's not in antibacterial soaps or anything like that, but it really is a much more uh, true and authentic pumpkin scent compared to Sweet Cinnamon Pumpkin. Um, Karen sent my way, had said that it really kind of, it slackens, you know, all fall, where it's a little bit of the sweetness of fall, a little bit of the kind of savory earthiness of pumpkins. Um, it's sort of almost more towards a pumpkin pie than sweet cinnamon pumpkin because sweet cinnamon pumpkin is so heavy on the cinnamon that it makes it less authentic. Um, and let's quickly just also see the notes. Again, this packaging is from 2011 when it was still known as pumpkin patch. But you can get this in stores now as pumpkin carving. And if you only bought one candle for fall, in my opinion, this should be it. Uh, but buy more than one. <laughs> uh, pumpkin Patch, uh, 2011, it read as an invitingly warm blend of fresh pumpkin, spicy cinnamon, creamy nutmeg, whipped butter, and brown sugar. These days they're not giving quite as many notes, but really this is um, everything they say here. Um, if I sniff the lid, again, I reviewed this before, but it's just 
oh, it's so good. It's almost a little waxy, like like you almost imagine a pumpkin to be. It's there's some sweetness, but it's not cloyingly sweet. It's a little bit buttery, a little bit vanilla, a tiny hint of spice, some you know more nutmeg than like a creamy nutmeg as opposed to a spicy cinnamon. Just you know across the board, top of the top, fantastic. Moving on to my second favorite, you know, cannot cannot classify, lavender caramel. Weird scent, weird image. The image of, is of French macarons, sort of before French macarons took off as, you know, the latest um, bakery sweets craze. Um, this was in 2011. It was a test scent. It did not go wide, actually. Uh, it was released in the very, very first Paris collection that fall um, in three mini candles. It was like, you know, French bundt cake and... Uh, I forget exactly, but two like sort of boring bakery scents, and then this lavender caramel. Um, it was released just as lavender macaroon uh, with two O's, so sort of typo as opposed to macaron. Um, and it's just like a, a you know sort of basic pretty purple wax. The notes on it are an unexpected blend of lavender, warm caramel, and brown sugar with just a touch of salt. Super strange mixing <laughs> lavender with caramel. And now, Karen of sent away, and I reviewed this um, when I went to one of my first runs to a test store. We ran through uh, on her channel back in 2011, just about two years ago. It was in early July of 2011. We ran through a ton of test scents, um, and this was one of them. And she said it smelled like stovetop stuffing, <laughs> and she didn't like it. Um, it. It does have a very savory note to it, with which is, I believe, like a sage, um, like an authentic sage. They have sage and cedar this year. They have lots of sage scents, but this actually smells like a velvety sage leaf. Mix in with a little bit of caramel. It's not the caramel that they normally talk about with their sweets and bakeries. That's why I don't call this a sweeter bakery scent. It doesn't smell like a cookie. There's a little bit of lavender, but it's an unexpected lavender. If they didn't name this lavender caramel, I do think it would have been successful. I wish they would bring it back. They could call it anything they want. It's more of a conceptual scent. It's The reason it was a failure is because it's not a bakery scent. It's not a cookie. It's not for the ooey-gooey, sticky caramel lovers, and it's not for the cologne herbal... Um, fresh, clean lovers. It kind of is just stands on its own as a really strange, unique, but it's one of those scents when I smell it. I, I bought a few of them when it was discontinued, and I'm sort of rationing, th rationing them out through the, the past couple of years that I smell it, and it's just, uh, it's so wonderful. It's odd, but I just completely, completely love it. It's, it's totally fall for me. So that's my second uh, unclassifiable one. Then, boy, this is just hit after hit we've got coming in here. Sweater Weather. Started as a test scent last year in white barn packaging, kind of an ugly label. Didn't go anywhere. It was Sweater Weather and Cedarwood Oak, which did not come back this year, which isn't that big of a, of a, a miss. Um, but Sweater Weather, just really, again, you know, Little Bell Deers talked about it. It's so strong. It is so good. It's so fresh. It's not cologne. Really lovely label this year in the Sweater Weather collection. Um, cuddle up with an aromatic blend of eucalyptus, juniper berry, and fresh sage that celebrates the arrival of sweater weather. Um, it's, it's heaviest on juniper berry and some eucalyptus. Not It's not eucalyptus like the eucalyptus candle that, that I love, um, but it's not cologne at all. It's very authentic. This candle gets a crazy burn, and it is so overwhelming that even in a large room, I have to blow it out after maybe an hour or two because it just knocks you out. Um, Definitely candle I don't really do in the evening. It's more a cold afternoon or, you know, a, a late August afternoon as I've been doing lately. Um, just really, like, it's a new must-have. It's like stock up on it because you never know what will happen. Uh, so, again, oh, that's the first from the Fresh and Outdoors collection of that I've categorized them in. Then we've got another favorite of mine, Mountain Leaves. This came along with um, Acorn and Fig, Lavender Caramel, uh, the original cinnamon sugar donut, marshmallow fireside, 2011 season. Like I said, 2011 was a good year for Slatkin and Co. candles. Um, this one, a lot of people didn't love it because it really was intense. Um, leans towards sort of the cologne, but more of an outdoor air, like they say, mountain leaves. Um, it's not so much cologne as their sage and cedar, um, bergamot woods. Uh, flannel, all that kind of the new White Barn collection. Um, it's a little bit more authentic outdoor, which I really loved. And the notes on it were a crisp blend of fresh mountain air, lush evergreens, iced citrus, and rich vetiver. Now, I'm a, I'm a sucker for anything with vetiver. I love vetiver colognes, vetiver candles. Just a really pretty, deep, intense candle. It's, it's, um, 
and it is strong. It's got a lot of vetiver, which is a really earthy, sort of damp, dank, um, grassy root, along with a little bit of that iced citrus, like a really tight bergamot. A little bit of an evergreen. Again, this is conceptual. It doesn't really smell like pine. It doesn't smell like, you know, any certain thing. The outdoor air. It really is just a really crisp fall day without being sweet or fruity or cologne or whatever. Um, and I really feel, I don't know if it's that we're missing Slatkin, you know, his team, it, how much that was marketing and how much that was, you know, legitimate. But they don't really seem to do these scents anymore that are, like this was an unabashed, Mountain Leaves was a conceptual scent. They put it out there. It was strong. It was a little more high-end and conceptual than the ones now they kind of cater a little bit more to being a little more generic and a little more accessible, which I get, you know, 3,000 stores, they have to be accessible to the mass market. Um, but this was a little more unique. So one of my favorites, again, that I've got one or two left that I'm really trying to savor and, and make last. And the final one from Outdoor Fresh, um, probably one of my top, obviously top 12, but maybe top five, fall fragrances, autumn. I've said it before, I reviewed it in my returning favorites video recently. It's so strong, it's fresh, it's the first... You know, if you're someone who doesn't like to burn candles until it starts to get cold out, you know, um, your fall candles until it gets cold out, um, autumn is the great transitional because it's so, it's not, you know, woody and heavy and dark. Um, there's a lot of dark fruits in there to make it a little bit sweet, um, but really intense, a lot of fresh air. The image of like, you know, that first fall day where you get that autumn sun, um, that's just something different about it. You can tell that it's different than your summer sun. Um, on the label there, that's what really this candle embodies for me. And the notes on it, at least last year, this is 2012 packaging, were on the brink of sweater weather, this inviting fragrance blends dark pomegranate with red apple and notes of fir balsam. I think they may have also said there was cedar in there or something this year, but oh, it's just so good. This is a candle that can burn for hours and hours. It's fresh. It's it's similar to sweater weather, actually, in the sense that it's it's heavy, but it's outdoorsy. It's not... It's clearly an autumn candle, it's not winter, um, because there's still so much brightness to it and freshness along with it. It's what I sometimes refer to as a heavy fresh. And it's just got the dark pomegranate without it being juicy. Um, you've got the apple, but it's not, you don't smell it and say, oh, it's apple. But if, if you th look for it, it's, you can find the apple in there, the really kind of juicy, you know, crisp apple. Um, just really, again, this is, if you're gonna get a few candles, get your pumpkin patch, get autumn, and call it a day. Then we move on to the next trio here uh, that I'm calling, what did I call it? I want to say the Dark Classic and Dark. I'm not really sure where we're getting these names from, but hey, you know, uh, Bath and Butter doesn't do such a great job with that either. So Classic and or Dark. We've got Cranberry Woods. Also, this one made its first appearance back in 2010. Um, I thought I might have had one of the original packaging uh, labels of this, but I'm, I couldn't find it. Um, th this label's not bad. Last year's was really ugly. Um, but the first few years, it was just, it was like, it looked like it was dark woods with like a deep purple sunset behind it. It was, it was, I'm sure it was photoshopped and, and you know, not, you know, true color, but it was really, it was just beautiful and I loved it. Um, and it really evoked what it's about. It's a dark, heavy, really like drippy cranberry scent, like a cranberry concentrate and not sugary sweet. Uh, mixed with a really nice woods. Um, again, they were doing great woods when they did this without it becoming a cologne scent. Um, again, I hate the word, but I use it because I get it. I understand when people say it smells like cologne. This doesn't. No one, I don't think anyone would wear this as a cologne. Um, the notes on it, though, are fresh tart cranberries. Sorry, let me try to get focus for you. Fresh tart cranberries, black currant, and warm cinnamon bark combined in a delightful fragrance inspired by the magic of the woods during harvest time. So you get cranberries, black currant, that's where you really get the drippy, sort of intense, concentrated cranberry scent. Um, and it's this is another one that kind of, whew, it is really strong. When you burn the sucker, it is, you're gonna smell it everywhere, but that's, you know, what we want, want candles to be. And you've got the woods in there, but it's just, it's not a pine, it's not a burnt, smoky wood. It's not particular, I don't really know if it's, a balsam, I don't think it's cedar, like maybe a white birch or something, but it's just dark, it's lush, it's heavy, and it's just, yeah, it's a really wonderful harvest cranberry scent. Um, some years they've done more cranberries with cranberry ciders and cranberry harvest and things like that. This year it's really light on that. I wish they would have more of a, of a berry without it being sweet um, in their candles this year, you know, woodland berry or something, but um, this is a really, really great fall berry scent. 
Then, again, this is probably, this is, I know, a lot of people's favorite, Marshmallow Fireside. This is its original packaging, like I said, first year it came out was 2011. Um, I, like I said, 2011, they were knocking them out of the park with great, great new fragrances that year, and a lot of them have come back as, you know, classics must-haves at this point. Um, Marshmallow Fireside, we first heard it, and we, we, you know, back in 2011, we were wondering what it could be, and it really is the Fireside candle with a little bit of the leather removed, throw on an ooey gooey sweet authentic marshmallow scent um, and smoldering woods and and it's just perfect um, this is probably my favorite packaging of it I hated last year's this year's decent if I can remember um, but I like this the wax better this is a nice white wax um, it's just like pretty purplish fire in the background there with marshmallows that are just starting to sorry let me get a little focus just starting to sort of melt and, and burn there on the you know the stick the original notes read, toasted marshmallows and sweet vanilla cream wrapped in the aroma of rich smoldering woods. Now this is something where, you know, their, their notes are usually pretty silly and, and don't make a lot of sense a lot of the time, but smoldering woods is the perfect description because it really does smell like it is, it's not burnt woods, it's not just, you know, woods. It really is smoldering as if you can see, you know, a pile of a fire that is about to go out with just those embers that are the deep, deep red, with, and it's just popping with a little bit of the blackness. It's just totally charred. Um, with a sweet, authentic vanilla cream marshmallow on top of it. Really, really great. This is also wonderful in wallflowers. I put it in, in um, uh, my bathroom just a few days ago, actually, a marshmallow fireside wallflower. Um, last year, it really had very poor burn. I haven't burned this year's. Um, I know LBD said that it smelled more like summertime s'mores and sort of missed some of the original True Marshmallow Fireside, so um, I haven't burned mine yet, but again, it's really a shame if that's the case, but this is just so fantastic. This is one that I can't imagine that ever retire because I think they'd have an uprising of people complaining because it really is just so fantastic. So holding on to that one, hoping that the 2013 version this year burns well. Then... Uh, what may be the sort of number one classic Slack and Co. Bath & Body Works fall candle, Leaves. Most people love it. Um, it was one of the first fall candles that I fell in love with, you know, back when I got Sweet Cinnamon Pumpkin, Pumpkin Patch, Leaves. Um, this was 2010, you know, before they even had um, Marshmallow Fireside. It was, I think, that and maybe uh, Cranberry Woods and, and one or two others that were out that year. And... Um, it's it's just it, the the classic sort of fall. This one could be called, uh, you know, where they have winter was the um, sort of main slack and winter scent. This could have been originally called autumn. Um, let's see the notes on this one. It's not my absolute favorite, so I'm just going to quickly run through. Uh, it's to celebrate the brilliant colors of autumn with this rich blend of golden nectar, red apple, and spiced berries. And it's always it's a little darker than the autumn candle. So to me, this smells. Um, Almost at this point, I'd say a little old-fashioned or generic. Um, it's got sort of that, you know, Joanne Fabrics craft store smell, artificial fall scent. Um, because you're getting sort of the berries mixed with the apple, the golden nectar makes it a little drippy and syrupy. Um, and you get, it's a little bit earthy, more so than, say, like the bright, fresh autumn candle would be. Um, it doesn't have the same apple note that autumn has. Um, and the golden nectar is, it almost almost gives it sort of a feeling of uh, almost amber, I want to say. It's not as strong or, or, you know, intense or musky as amber is, um, but it's got that same sort of warmth to it that the others don't have. So this one's a little bit of a later in fall. You can even see comparing this one looks a little bit more like, you know, autumn candles a September day, leaves is more of an October day. Um, really, really nice. I sort of, last year, I really didn't burn it much at all. And in fact, this, I think this is the only one I have of it. Um, because I loved it originally, but then it really just got eclipsed by much better scents and fragrances um, over the past year or two. But still, it's a classic. I couldn't really do a fall picks and leave out uh, leave out leaves. So that's a goodie. Then moving on to the final four in the background here. This is what I'm calling my sweets or bakery grouping. First up is a new one last year that I'm happy to report came back this year. Uh, Whiteboard number one, nutmeg and spice. Uh, it's similar to some scents they had over over the past couple of years, but it does stand on, on its own. It kind of is along the lines of Kitchen Spice or Creamy Nutmeg. Um, almost even the Aromatherapy Sleep collection that was a limited late 2011 collection that was, um, I think it was just called Vanilla Cinnamon uh, or something along those lines. And it was uh, it actually smelled more like this, like a Creamy Nutmeg and Spice. Now, the notes on this one, 
are a warm and cozy fragrance inspired by an elegant mixture of nutmeg and all of autumn's very best spices. Now, uh, the 2013 version may have a little, a few more things added to it, but I, I don't know why I keep coming back to this. It's just such a great candle. It's not, it's not crazy like marshmallow fireside or sweater weather or super crazy unique like a mountain leaves or pumpkin patch or cranberry woods, but it's just so nice and calming, comforting. It's um, a really great evening candle. Um, I love to layer with it because it just adds a, a sort of roundness or warmth. Um, I don't know that nutmeg and spice is exactly the right name for it. I'd almost call it you know, um, maybe nutmeg, I suppose nutmeg, but like nutmeg and cream, um, because it's just, a, it's kind of creamy and milky, a little bit of vanilla to it, nothing overwhelming, but it's kind of milky without being a sweet, you know, so, so many times there's like a frothy sort of caramel to it, or sweetness to things like this, but it's really just creamy, it's like a thick, creamy, light, but comforting scent, um, and really there's nothing else like it, especially in the White Barn or, or Slatkin Bath & Body Works lines. So it's really, really great. It's nice on its own. It's strong enough for being a light, sort of slightly standard or generic scent. Um, but it's strong enough, again, that it can be on its own or layer really nicely with other things. Then we've got a favorite of mine that I'm, I'm surprised and kind of bummed that it didn't come back this year outside of the semi-annual sale. Apple Crumble. This made its first appearance in 2011, was that 2000? It was, yes, 2011. This is the 2012 packaging. And in 2013, they only had it for the semi-annual sale, like the $11 candles. So I grabbed one, but I would have liked it to stay around for all of you know the autumn season, so I could grab one and then grab another one a month or two later. Um, I was really impressed when this came out. Again, 2011, it was the year of amazing candles. There was also the... Uh, what else was out that year? Homemade cookies might have been new. They had, um, well, mint chocolate wasn't new, but it was out. They had oatmeal raisin cookie, which I didn't love, but I know a lot of people did love because it was so heavy on like oatmeal and raisin. Um, caramel apple, but that wasn't new that year. Um, but again, just really nice sense, 2011. Whoever did that was like, they were the best. Um, the notes on this one, before I talk about what I feel, are the perfect way to chase away an autumn chill. Baked Granny Smith and Macintosh apples topped with vanilla crumble. Um, I kind of like this, you know, artisanal bakery label from last year um, with that big font on it. I love the color of it. It's not your typical apple. It's not even your typical bakery. Um, it's a mix of the two, and I just, I smell it and I still love it. It's probably my favorite apple. You see, I don't have a pure true apple here. Um, and for me, this is good enough that I don't need a plain apple. Um, it's got the green apple to it, and it's it's fresh without being like intensely artificial or powdery the way that I think that some apples tend to go. Um, or the reason I don't like farm scent apple is with that they added a weird hint of oak, and when it burns it just smells kind of like fuel or oil to me or just not natural, not really apple, um, just kind of off. Whereas this has that apple, it has a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of sort of, you know, like the crumbly top of a coffee cake without being you know, super ooey gooey. It's not like apple pie. It doesn't really have n much, if any, I'd say really no spice to it. Um, so it's not an apple pie or an apple turnover. Um, it really is just sort of a pure, nice, green, sweet apple, um, again, with vanilla and just that little bit of flowery bakery to it. And yeah, it's, I, I love it so much. I think it's just really, really great. For someone like me who doesn't love bakeries, it's, you know, really, really nice. Then, oh gosh, this candle, Cinnamon Sugar Donut, again, 2011, it first came out, <laughs> I say again, that was the year, um, Cinnamon Sugar Donut, this is an ugly label, um, it was much nicer in 2011 when it came out, um, this label's 2012, this year, for reasons that I will never understand, this did not come back, they sort of replaced it with Cider Donut, which I reviewed earlier, but it's just, Cider Donut does not cut it, it's more like a lame imitation of apple crumble as if like you know some second-rate candle company that's in the discount bins wanted to make you know apple crumble released cider donut and that's what we've got this year and replacing apple crumble and cinnamon sugar donut um this one it didn't burn well for a lot of people in 2010 or i'm sorry 11 i had trouble with mine but it did end up correcting itself and having a surprisingly strong throw after it worked through the issues so don't give up when your candles aren't are not burning well um 
the crazy thing with this is it's so ridiculously authentic. Um, again, bakery isn't my favorite thing, but if you put bakery in front of me and it smells absolutely real and not just like some mishmash blend of sugary sweet crap, then I will love it because this truly smells like a cake donut, pure, very real, rolled with its excess oil, rolled in cinnamon sugar, um, hot, you know, it's the perfect fall treat. I could write the label for it right now. Um, it's really just, there's no apple to it, which the cider donut tries to throw the apple in it, which is, I, I don't need cider in, in, in my donut. Just give me a true cinnamon sugar donut. And you can smell the bakery. It smells hot. You can it's some, you can smell that it's like a crispy oil um, on top of the donut. Just like perfect. Um, the notes, uh, share the delight with a homemade vanilla cake donut covered with sh in sugar crystals and crushed cinnamon. And you really get the sugar crystals. You get the cinnamon. Um, everything. And it burned well last year. I have no idea why they didn't bring it back this year. Um, last year it was out with, what was it, cinnamon nut bread, which was really just banana bread, which didn't come back this year. No surprise. Um, but yeah, this is, I think, my last one of this, and I almost don't want to burn it just because I love it and I hate that it's gone. Then, last year's winner of New Sense that stuck around and became favorites for most folks. This kind of replaced Caramel Apple, which I know a lot of people weren't happy about, um, but that came out with the SM annual sale this year. Cider Lane, really nice label on it last year. Um, I've got, I think, two of these, so I don't have this year's packaging, but it's a darker candle, um, you know, almost like a, a dark, dark, sort of rusty red. Um, Cider Lane is interesting because it doesn't exactly smell like, it's not apple cider or spice cider, um, it just kind of smells like caramel dip for apples, and I normally wouldn't like something like that that's just ooey gooey sweet, but again, because it's so ridiculously authentic, the way that like a Starbucks, um, uh, what is it, what, I don't know what they call it, like a, a spiced cider latte, not latte, just their, their hot apple cider, um, which by the way is actually straight up apple juice with their, their caramel sauce in it, it's not cider at all, it's just you know, golden apple juice with caramel in it. Um, this has that caramel scent to it. Um, the notes on it, as sweet as the, as the trip to, as sweet as, yeah, as sweet as the trip to the local apple orchard each year, a delicious fall blend of mulled cider, warm caramel, and sweet cinnamon. I don't think there's cider in this. I, I, there's not really apple. It is, I mean, maybe. It really is just a thick caramel that you dip apples into, or a, a caramel apple. Oh, it's very, it's so pure. There's got a little bit of freshness to it. Everyone knows this one. I don't have to go in depth with it, but it's just a really, for an ooey gooey scent, it's great because it's not, it's not a buttery caramel. That's the difference. It's not, it's not just a buttery, buttery caramel, you know, milky. It's a, it's sort of a fresh caramel. I suppose, I suppose there is apple in there and that makes it much more fresh um, of, a, of a caramel scent and just sugary. So that's Cider Lane, really, really great. Um, I'm gonna, I have these all stacked up here. I'm gonna try to run through them again to, to uh, give the overview. So that was Cider Lane, Cinnamon Sugar Donut, Apple Crumble, White Barn, number one, Nutmeg and Spice. All right, moving up, Leaves, Marshmallow Fireside, Autumn, da -da -da -dum. no, that's not right, is it? Gosh, look at me, I'm already making a mess. I don't know, guys. I can't remember anything I did now. Cranberry Woods leaves and Marshmallow Fireside. <laughs> Clearly these aren't the best categories. Then we have Mountain Leaves, Sweater Weather, and Autumn, followed by the two that don't need a category, Pumpkin Patch, aka Pumpkin Carving, and Lavender Caramel. And I will say a few honorable mentions. Again, this is my top 12. I could have made it 15, but that would be a little too crazy because who needs to do that many? Honorable mentions would be Autumn Apple. Don't like Farm Sand Apple. I realized that finally. Um, but the uh, Autumn Apple was much more of a true apple scent without a whole lot else going on. Um, black Pepper Bergamot. I love, love that scent. Um, roasted Pumpkin Butter is actually pretty nice. I know a lot of people say it's peanut butter. To me, I still get some sort of... Um, pumpkin-y, roasted, some sort of non-peanut butter scent to it. And finally, Acorn and Fig, also known as Autumn Day. Um, not an absolute favorite. I wouldn't miss it too terribly if it was gone, but still a great scent. Um, but again, these are my top 12 years past and present 
uh, for the Bath and Body Works fall candle picks. If you have any questions, comments, hit me up below. I'd love to hear what you love or hate or what you think I've missed in this collection. And until next time, take care.